Episode 2, Quarter Tone Terms 1. Finally, we're able to get into quarter tones. So that we can ease into this new world as gently as possible, Episode 2 here will be dealing with basic terminology and symbols in 24 tone that will be seen throughout the rest of the series. Unlike in previous videos, due to some technological restrictions, much more of the examples you will see moving forward will be hand-drawn. I once again will ask one of the questions from the introductory episode, what even is a quarter tone? Back then, I stated that quarter tones are notes that exist in between the notes that we currently use, a set of new pitches whose distance is one quarter of a step from the notes around it. Due to having a new set of notes to deal with, naturally, we need to have a new set of names to give each of them, all coupled with their own symbols. One big problem that you're going to see with quarter tones is that the terms, accidentals, intervals, modes, and chord qualities names will vary wildly by region, era, individual composer. Much like in the earliest days of modern notation, nothing is fully standardized yet, and there are a few different schools of notation for quarter tones. I'll introduce a bit of how different schools handle these accidentals, and once that is done, I'll declare the system that I personally use and why. To quote Ivor Derig in the translator's introduction to Ivan Vyshegradsky's Manual of Quarter Tone Harmony, since the quarter tonists were scattered about the world and usually were not aware of one another's existence when starting to work in this field, there has been and is now no standardization of nor agreement of notation, keyboard layouts, redesign of certain instruments, violin fingering, and other matters which necessarily have to be decided by anyone who uses the quarter tone system. Frankly, I do not expect to see any standardization for a very long time, if ever. The bright side of all this is that you are free to do your own thing. No need to conform to anybody else's notions. The notation affair is still further complicated by conflicts in the meaning of certain signs, and by the fact that some non-quarter tone systems have been written down with the same signs as quarter tones with different meanings. Derek then goes on to identify the following systems for notation, which were utilized by many different composers. Alois Abba to have the half flat or quarter tone flat or semi flat notated as an open facing backwards flat sign. The one and a half flat or three quarter tone flat or sesqui flat looks like a normal flat except with a small flag on the top. Semi sharps enigmatically look almost identical to a flat except for the open facing, and three quarter tone sharps, sesqui sharps, look like a normal sharp with a hook on the bottom. I find the system to be difficult to follow, as well as being highly unintuitive, so I don't plan on using it. Ivan Vyshnagransky's system was the first that I was introduced to. Semi-flats are notated with an open bottom flat sign. Sesqui flats are two accidentals put together, a semi and normal flat. Semi-sharps are notated like a normal sharp, except they only have one vertical stroke instead of the normal two. And sesqui sharps have three vertical strokes and two horizontal. Mildred Cooper's method is arguably the most popular. Semi-flats are backwards flat signs. A sesqui flat is taking two of the flat signs, a backwards and a forwards one, and sticking them together, creating a sort of heart-shaped symbol. And the sharps are notated the same as in Vishnogradsky's system. Krzysztof Penderecki had a superficially similar system to Cooper, except his definitions of symbols were different, which certainly can lead to confusion on the part of the reader and of the theorist. A filled-in flat is for a quarter step. The backwards flat, which was used for semi-flats in her system, are actually used for sesqui flats in his system. Semi-sharps only have one stroke in each direction, like a small cross, and sesqui sharps have one horizontal stroke and two vertical. Finally, Julian Carrillo, an early experimenter in quarter tones, used two separate systems for notation. One way that he notated was with backslashes for semi-flats, and a backslash with a flat sign for sesqui flats. A forward slash and a forward slash with a sharp for the respective sharp signs. An alternative system he used was numeric, abandoning standard notation altogether, using 0 through 23 for all tones in the scale. So. 0 is equal to C, or 1 is C semi-sharp, etc. This is similar in ways to serial music, which in set theory will use 0 through 9 and also T and E to notate the 12 steps of a chromatic scale. 
I personally use Cooper's method, and I'll be using it in this series, not only as an appeal to popularity, but also due to how intuitive the system is. Writing these notations are simple. There are some fonts available that actually contain her accidental symbols, which you can get from programs like Finale and Sibelius, and her system is the one you'll come across most often in the wild. So, let's get on to tacking these new symbols onto actual notes. Since we can move in quarter steps, there are now four notes in between C and D. Let's look at and listen to them. C natural is followed by C semi sharp. After that is the regular C sharp we're familiar with, then C sesqui sharp, and then finally D C double sharp or D natural. To move back down, we have D natural, D semi flat, D flat, D sesqui flat, D double flat, or C natural. Perhaps you're starting to see a little bit why I include double sharps and flats in my notations. You can see a clear path of the quarter, half, three quarter, and whole steps in this way. And if you're familiar enough with your notations, you'll understand that the double flats and double sharps are enharmonic with other natural pitches. There are new notes placed in between E and F and B and C, where previously there was nothing. E semi sharp is the halfway point to F natural. C semi flat is halfway to B natural. Let's look at and listen to a 24 tone chromatic scale, ascending and descending. If you're well trained in music, which if you're watching the series, I hope you are, you're probably anticipating the octave to arrive far sooner than it will. One of the things that I find so wonderful about quarter tones is how fine and delicate chromaticism is in it. You're able to pass gently between notes with much more finesse. It's like a ballerina tiptoeing across the room. Just as with 12 tone music, there are plenty of enharmonic notes. All of the old ones still apply, of course, because the 24 tone system is not a replacement of the old one, but an addition to it. Let's look at some of these enharmonics. C semi sharp is enharmonic with D sesqui flat. C sesqui sharp is enharmonic with D semi flat. E semi sharp and F semi flat are enharmonic. So are B sesqui sharp and C semi sharp. It takes a bit of time to get used to the distances that are moved, how things sort of just skip past old notes, but with some work, you'll get them worked out just fine. I recommend getting a sheet of music paper out and trying to work out N harmonies on your own. If you need a place to begin with, why don't you try to name the harmonics in the following pitches? Pause the video and work out the answers. Be mindful, there may be more than one answer. If these were your answers, you did well. 1. B sesqui flat is equal to A semi sharp. 2. F semi sharp is equal to G sesqui flat. 3. B sesqui sharp is equal to C semi sharp. Because B sharp is equal to C, a B sesqui sharp is going to be past a C. 4. E semi flat is equal to D sesqui sharp. And 5. C semi sharp is equal to D sesqui flat. While we will definitely be covering intervals that are larger than a whole step, there are no standardized accidentals for, say, a double sharp plus another semi sharp, or one and one quarter steps. At this point, you would likely just follow in the steps of 12 tone and have stacked accidentals, like when you have a triple sharp. Let's put the accidentals aside for now and look a little bit about how we're going to classify the new intervals. We'll go into more detail about this in the next episode. As is the case with how old and harmonics carry over into the new system, so too will the old interval qualities carry over. A C to a D sharp is still an augmented second, and a C to a B flat is still a minor seventh. However, we're going to see a problem with naming intervals, as, like with the varying systems of accidentals, there are multiple ways of naming the new intervals. 
The most universal part of the intervals that I've seen would be the use of semi, sub, and super as modifiers. If you wish to lower or raise a perfect interval by a quarter step, you would call these new intervals semi-diminished or semi-augmented. There's no way that I've found to write out these qualities in the manner of capital M's or lowercase d's in the standard systems, so I actually will be using my own homemade system. Semi intervals will be notated with a curly line or a tilde. So let's say we want to write the shorthand name for a semi diminished fifth. I would write it as tilde lowercase d five. If I want to write this interval of a C to an F semi sharp, that would be tilde capital A four or a semi augmented fourth. For cases where you wish to go another quarter step past a diminished or augmented interval, you call these super augmented and super diminished, which I will notate with a plus sign. So C to G sesqui sharp is written as plus A5, called a super augmented fifth. The major intervals can be raised a quarter step, called super major intervals. C to D semi-sharp is a super major second, notated as a plus capital M2. For intervals that are a quarter step lower than minor, they're called sub minor, which is given a dash for a prefix. So D to B sesqui flat is a sub minor sixth, notated as dash lowercase m six. We also get a unique new interval that sits in the middle of its major and minor counterparts which we call a neutral interval. For instance, we have D to F semi-sharp, exactly in the middle of D to F, a minor third, and D to F sharp, a major third. D to F semi-sharp is called a neutral third, notated with a lowercase m. So the full spectrum from flattest to sharpest is now super diminished, diminished, semi-diminished, sub-minor, minor, neutral, major, super major, semi-augmented, augmented, super augmented. That's a very large list of interval names to remember. Maybe it's starting to dawn on you a little bit about how complex the issue of quarter tone nomenclature is. I don't want this video to go on for too long and I'm only partially done with naming and beginning to classify these terms so I will be breaking this part of my series into two pieces. For some auxiliary work I would strongly recommend you try to practice drawing quarter tone accidentals and writing down random intervals and trying to work out their names. In the description, I will have two links to a worksheet I made as PDFs, which you can print out and try to complete. The first link is the empty worksheet, and the second will be the answers. Episode 3 will go into more detail about the specific intervals, how they sound, and how we can build new scales in them. If you're wanting to warm your ears up a bit more to quarter tones, check out some of the videos that I'll have posted below as well. Some pieces will use quarter tones far more as an effect, an ornamentation almost, and others will be more structural with 24 tone harmony. If you have any questions about the video or about the answers to the questions, please ask them below and I'll try to get them worked out with you. Until next time.